Hi there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. So glad to be with you today. Grab yourself a cup of tea and stay with us. You will be glad that you did. Have a wonderful guest, a wonderful recipe, and uh, wonderful people here in the studio that are going to make this program happen. So I hope things are really going really well in your own home. And uh, just pause right now because we have a great guest today. He's a psychiatrist. And his name is Dr. Timothy Jennings, and he wrote the book, The God-Shaped Brain. And um, as uh, we'll bring it up in the interview that the Bible tells us in the last days that knowledge will increase. I believe that's every kind of knowledge there is, good, bad, and different. And have you noticed there's more studies coming out about the brain right now and, and how you can uh, encourage the good development of your children's brains when they're very small and they're trying to find out, you know, what causes Alzheimer's. Very interesting subject. And this very brilliant gentleman, he can speak to we regular folks in a way we understand. You're going to love him. And I'm going to join Stephanie with a no-bake sugar-free strawberry shortcake. This is one for your health library. It's got a lot of good things in it. And, of course, what's better than strawberries? And it, you, don't, you don't bake it, and uh, we'll put it together for you. I tasted some of it this morning. It was awesome. I again want to offer you the 99 promises of, 199 promises of God. I carry this with me. Uh, there's a lot of things, especially if you watch the news, um, and it really even out in society a lot of times, everything's very coarse and combative and all, and sometimes you just need the promises of God. I'm glad it's a small book and you can take it with you. I, I was going through it um, a while ago there's a lot in uh, Proverbs here. Keep therefore these words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper. That's a good one. 199 of them. And it's fun to just kind of go through it and probably God will point out one that will be a total blessing and exactly what you need. So you can have it for any amount. The Im information's on your screen. Uh, you can use your credit card, your debit card, 1-800-229-0059 or uh, write to me at Home Keepers. We love getting your mail. I've been forwarding mail to Stephanie this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we love hearing from you. And here she is. Yes. The aforementioned a Stephanie. Aforementioned Stephanie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I forwarded that letter to you this morning. This uh, lady and her daughter both facing some cancer mm -hmm. situations. And this is... Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like the experience. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I can say everything in the world, but mm -hmm. uh, you... You've traversed it. Yes. Okay, what are we going to do? Okay, so we, I get a lot of uh, messages saying, what about us diabetics? Yeah. So this, this is, is a diabetic, diabetic no-bake, sugar-free strawberry cheesecake, mm -hmm. and it's delicious. Yeah, so I'm going to send this to my uh, daughter-in-law because uh, she has a granddaughter, my great-granddaughter, quite young, mm -hmm. that has some. Um, and she'll fix it for her. Good, good. Okay, so you have three-quarter cup ground cram cracker crust. Mm -hmm. You have three tablespoons of butter melted and a quarter teaspoon each of cinnamon and nutmeg. Mm -hmm. I have um, cream cheese, a block of cream cheese that I'm going to mix up, and then I'm going to put in a cup and a half of milk. And what's more fun than a no-bake right? recipe? Nothing. And then I have sugar-free cheesecake-flavored jello pudding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that's this is kind of so, what holds it together. Yes, this is so easy. So what you're going to want to do is she's making the crust. You really want a fork for that. Do I? Yeah. And you're gonna, she's going to mix it all together, and she's just going to press it into the bottom of an 8-inch pie pan. There you go. Yes. So I have this all creamed up, and I'm just going to pour in the milk. It's so super simple. And I love this simple one. As I uh, mentioned, I did taste it, and... I like something that's very pleasant, but not real sugary sweet. Yes, and that's this, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, when you put the milk in, it's very watery. And Arthlene this morning was like, I said, what um, are you doing? that's really watery. But you put pudding in it then. Mm -hmm. So let me get the cream cheese off of mm -hmm. the sides here. It's always good to have a scraper. Doing a great job, Arthlene mm -hmm. Rippy. Do you know, uh, the, to me, the eighth wonder of the world is <coughs> the fact that God sends us such fabulous guests. Oh, gosh, yes. The one such, today is going to knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Such amazing guests. And then uh, remember Jack Levin, 
who talked about drugs, and he knew because he lived on drugs yep. for a long time. Is that good enough to? Yes, that's very good. And you're just going to press it down, down okay. gently. I'm going to put the pudding in, and then I'm going to mix it up again. And that will thicken it. And that will thicken it, yeah. Oh, yesterday we proved what good Christians we were. We did? The air conditioning <laughs> wasn't on, oh. and, no, and nobody, you know. Nobody killed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Uh. We're oh, in Florida, oh, we're in and Florida. it was like 94 degrees yesterday, okay? It was toasty in here. It was. And uh, boy, when it walked in today. We know how blessed we are yes. to have air conditioning. Yes. So you're supposed to start do that first and then put that in the refrigerator and chill while you're making this, but we're just going to pour it in. Yeah. Look, it's sticking up nicely. You'll have to take chill that, with the um, rest of the stuff. Yes. So anything with cream Excuse cheese me is while I so paper delicious. Towel. Okay. All right. <laughs> Excuse you. If you want to bring the other one over. Back to um, the other topic. Please feel free to send us your prayer requests. Mm -hmm. um, this lady asked for prayer from you and Wanda mm -hmm. and me, and we will do it. Oh, for sure. We'll do it. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, yeah, so I'm putting half of the cream cheese mixture in, and then I'm going to cover it in strawberries, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to put the other half in and mm -hmm. do strawberries again. Okay? And I am in love with fix ahead stuff. Oh, me? Especially too. if you're having company. Yes, or, I'm all about preparing or Thanksgiving or anything, any dish you can do to. Uh, fix ahead, you will be very grateful. I am doing Thanksgiving this year, and I'm so super excited, and I've already got my list started. Oh, you, I'm you getting my plans else. going, because I want to be ready, and I want to be able to spend, because my whole family is going to be here this year. It'll be the oh, first time fun. in like 20, 23, 24 years How that we've people? all been together. Um, oh, I don't know, 16, 12, 15, I don't know. Mm. So good? Mm-hmm. That cheesy flavor. So good. Okay, I gotta get a fork. Yeah. We might just stand here and eat this. We're just gonna stand here and eat it. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy. Mm. That is so mm -hmm. delicious and, and so she, fresh. She found the recipe and gave it to me and um, and I said, I love getting recipes from her because she knows the parameters of doing it in about six minutes. Well, and that, and I keep getting messages from people because we keep doing naughty stuff. Oh. So naughty. Like, we're we just... need to be good sometimes, and this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to be sending this and hope that I fix it for my great-granddaughter, Charlotte. And if you think of her, if you pray for her, mm -hmm. I know Jesus can heal anything. Amen. I'd like for him to heal her diabetes while yes. she's young. Yep. All right. You, I, I really hope you can sit down and pay attention to Dr. Timothy Jennings because what he is going to say today can be a great blessing to you, your grandchildren, your children. Educate you. That's a good thing. So um, stay right there. You can get the uh, recipe from the information comes up on the screen, then you'll meet Dr. Jennings. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Okay, what a joy it is to welcome Dr. Timothy Jennings to Homekeepers. Glad you're here. Thanks for having me. And um, he is a psychiatrist. Maybe I've had one or two on in 20 years, so I'm really glad that you're here. And I was wondering, uh, when you were a little boy, did you say, I'm going to grow up and be a psychiatrist? No, I, I had a vision of being a physician, but I didn't uh, know what specialty I was going to choose as a mm -hmm. child. And uh, so were you in med school when you decided yeah. to... The experiences of med school, going through the different in medicine, OBGYN, pediatrics, and then psychiatry, I was most fascinated with the brain and the mind. Mm -hmm. So much more there yet to discover, in my view. I, I agree. And, um, you know, the Bible says in the last days, knowledge will increase. 
And we're seeing that yeah. on every level, good, yeah. bad, and different. And, uh, one of them certainly is the brain. Uh, we're going to talk about his book, The God-Shaped Brain, but I'd like to mention a couple of others. The Aging Brain, which is a really important book, I think, today in America. And also, um, The God-Shaped Heart. I haven't got to go through this one yet, but I will. So, uh, so how do you, I know that you do a lot of lectures, and uh, you have a private practice, and you're writing books. Uh, how do you do it all, anyway? You know, just use your time wisely. Mm -hmm. you know, early to bed, early to rise. I, I'm usually up about 5.30, 5.45 each morning and try to do a little bit, a couple hours before I see my first patients at 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you were raised a Christian. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, that certainly puts you on a path because in psychiatry, not everybody's a Christian. And so, that, so there's a different viewpoints of what maybe could help that patient. Yeah, so it was actually a combination of being raised Christian and then going to the psychiatry residency. Because I was raised Christian, but honestly, I'll be honest, my upbringing was more of an indoctrination than critical reasoning in Christianity. And my um, psychiatry residency mm -hmm. challenged my beliefs. And I had to get very serious as a believer in God. If, if there really is God, then he should have better answers than the worldly view. And so I really dug in and spent thousands of hours studying scripture for God's principles and how the mind works. Uh, and so it really helped me become a critical reasoner and reason out uh, God's plan for a healthy mind, healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. And before we talk about that mind, I'd like to talk about the brain itself a little bit. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I know when my babies were born, I looked at them and I loved them and everything, but I never thought, okay, what can I do to really nourish this brain? Uh, that might be something for moms and dads to think about, wouldn't it? Oh, it's huge. And in fact, it starts before birth. Um, the uh, interuterine environment, if a mother's highly stressed during pregnancy, then her stress hormones change brain development and that baby will be more ir born, more irritable and more stressed. Um, wow. Neurobiologically, epigenetically, it changes the structure of the brain. And then after a child is born, a baby has at birth hundreds of millions of neurons more at birth than the baby will have by the time it's eight years of age. For the first eight years of age, the brain is busy going through this remodeling. And I tell people to conceptualize it as Michelangelo's block of marble when Michelangelo gets it and Michelangelo's block of marble when he's done with it. When he's done, he has less marble but he has a masterpiece. Our brain comes into the world prepared to be acted upon by education, experience, and, and environment. And neural circuits which are being exercised will expand. Mm -hmm. Neural cir circuits which are not used will be pruned back. So early childhood development, the studies show that uh, kids who have parents who are loving, attentive, holding them, uh, caressing them, kissing them, and so forth, it actually makes positive brain changes so they have better capacity for relationships, they have less anxiety, less mental health problems. Kids who are either abused or neglected, not attended to, not held, actually have upregulation of their brain stress circuitry, which makes them more mental health problems later, like anxiety, depression, but also more relationship problems. So the brain is very pliable. Just that much certainly is worth your coming here. I, that is so great. Several years ago, Life Magazine had a cover story on that, and that the more you play with that little baby and kitschy, kitschy, coo, and That's right. whatever you do, uh, those neurons multiply very quickly. I was telling my son about it. We were on a plane going to the Holy Land, and, and uh, I said, I think you have to do it when they're kind of young and they multiply very quickly. He says, well, it's too late for me. I said, too late? What do you mean? I said, your wife did it by instinct. <laughs> I mean, those are three of the smartest, well-balanced kids, and she just, she just knew that. But that was the environment she grew up in, too. Yeah, yeah. And so that, so that interaction with real people versus with a screen Okay. Yes. The, the, da the data shows, multiple studies show that any screen time, TV, video watching of any kind before the age of two delays language development. So American Academy of Pediatrics, American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry recommend no screen time for kids below the age of two and then strict limits thereafter because more screen time alters the wow. brain structure. And if it's theatrical entertainment, theatrical meaning entertainment, entertainment rather than educational, that type of screen time as they grow up will, will alter brains so they become more impulsive, less able to restrain, more moody and irritable, and they act out more and they're more prone to early sexual experiences, alcohol and substance use, and violence the more screen time they get growing up than if they don't have as much screen time. Do you know, I think you're giving me chills. This, this is great stuff that I don't think we've had on here before. Now, um, what about 
substances because when kids get a little older, I understand that if, if a junior high that age group use marijuana and change the brain forever, that it, what it does, it can't be fixed. Also, what about the brain when it watches violence, pornography? Isn't there a lot of interaction there? Right, and so the, um, one, of the, one of the things I try to teach in my books is this idea that God is creator and his laws are the laws upon which reality work. One of those is the law of exertion. If you want something to get stronger, you must exercise it. Because if you don't use it, you lose, lose it. it. That's not just true for your physical muscles, it's true for your brain as well. If you want strong musical skill, you've got to practice your instrument. Strong math ability, you've got to work problems. So if you spend time looking at porn or spend time watching violence or these types of things, you will actually expand neural circuits that respond to that type of um, media and exposure and become more like that. So the Bible talks about it by beholding we become changed. We actually are transformed to become like what we spend time admiring, esteeming, engaging in, and internalizing neurobiologically and characterologically. Okay, and then uh, I'd like to kind of address marijuana because it's legal medically in this state, but there's a big push now to make it the recreational legal. Um, what does that what does marijuana do to the brain? So the dangers about what's happening in society is that there's really little scientific evidence to support what's happening. Marijuana has over 100, 130 different uh, compounds that are psychoactively active, okay? Two of those compounds have been studied. The other m more than 100 haven't even been studied yet, but they're, they're active. The two that have been studied is THC, and THC is the what you get the buzz from, but THC is also neurotoxic. The more THC, the more damage it does to your brain. Kids that are under 18 who smoke marijuana regularly have um, structural changes in the memory circuits of their brain. They have lower IQ um, from smoking uh, marijuana. The other compound, uh, is um, cannabidiol, uh, CBD oil, basically. Mm -hmm. And there is evidence that CBD oil may actually have some neuroprotective effects, but you can't get a buzz and you can't get a high from CBD oil. And the, what happens in the way the plants work genetically is if you want more THC, then you epigenetically turn the genes on that make THC in the plant, but that turns off the cannabidiol gene, so you get less cannabidiol. So the higher THC, the more toxic it is, the more buzz you can get, but the more damage it does to your brain. If you want it to have some neuroprotective effect on your brain, then you have to breed out the THC where you can't get a buzz from it anymore. Yes, and a lot of people depend on a, a buzz. Okay, is alcohol the same? Basically. Al al alcohol works in a different mechanism completely. Um, uh, the THC works on the endocannabinoid system in our brain. It's a system of receptors, and your brain has these receptors, and you make endogenous cannab cannabinoids um, that mm -hmm. affect satiety, affect your appetite, can affect pain response. Your brain can make these in, s in various situations, and that's where the uh, THC is operating. Mm -hmm. Alcohol actually works to affect the lipid membranes and the open ion channels, it's much, it's much cruder, actually, chemical, uh, and it works in a different mechanism. And, and one more question on uh, just the brain and structure and how it's affected. How long does marijuana stay in the brain? So in the brain, I'm not sure. In the body, it's very lipophilic. So it, it, it saturates in your adipose tissue. And you can have marijuana in your body months later. Mm -hmm. And so if you then have a little bit of weight loss, mobilizing some fat in your body, then suddenly you get a release of it and you can have a blood level again. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of lodges in your body for, for many months afterwards. Boy, you've taught me a lot today. And I, I know my wonderful viewers are really enjoying this. Okay, talk about... We're talking about the brain now. Integrative evidence, and it's based on scripture, science, and experience. Yeah, so this idea, people are, how do you know what's true? You get this all the time, kids, young people saying, well, this person says this, that person says this, how do you know what's true? And so in the pursuit of truth, I've um, put forth this uh, approach called the integrative evidence-based approach, which requires harmony of three separate threads of evidence that God has given us. And the three threads are scripture, all scriptures is God breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. Um, science, the scripture says that uh, God's divine nature is seen in what he has made so that men are without mm -hmm. excuse and life experiences. Taste and see that the Lord is good, the Bible says. And so when we separate the three threads, we have problems. Uh, science all by itself frequently leads to godlessness. Experience all by itself leads to mysticism and mystical religions. 
And scripture all by itself leads to confusion. According to the Christian Encyclopedia, there's over 30,000 Christian groups arguing amongst themselves. Yes. And so we uh, look for the truth that is uh, supported by all three threads. And that's when we know we found real truth because it's supported in scripture, science, and how life works. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so glad to meet you. We, we have a psychologist on here regularly, Dr. David Clark, and the two of you are very similar in that absolutely based on, on the Word of God, uh, that what, what you're doing and, and what you're prescribing or whatever, that, that basis is there from the true God, and uh, that's the way you conduct yours. That's exactly right. God's, God is the creator. And as I so, told you before we came on today, yes. you can't be healthy while violating the laws of health. That's not just physical. God's design, he's the creator. He built reality. He has laws that govern all of life, including relationships, mm -hmm. how our minds work. You can't have healthy relationships while violating how God designed relationships to operate. There are certain principles or design protocols for, for love to work. For instance, love, you can't get love and trust by threatening to kill the person who won't love and trust you. You can't do it. Or well, cheating on your mate. <laughs> you can't get love and trust by, by deceit or by cheating. No, th th it always breaks it down. It always incites rebellion. And so when, when people are rebelling in a, in a relationship, you have to evaluate, well, why? Is that rebellion um, a godly rebellion? Because it's godly to rebel against violations of God's design. We should rebel because we're rebelling into God's design. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? Right. And and the rebellion probably is there in about anybody. They just don't know it. They, they can't identify it. So many like people something's wrong. Many people are in relationships where they're not necessarily being physically coerced, they're being emotionally coerced in relationships. Criticized, put down, name called, and, and they live with this, this emotional fear that if they don't do what their partner wants, they'll be punished in some way. So they're not actually having the freedom to be themselves, and so they're constantly subordinating their own individuality under the pressure of the other person's love is being destroyed in that relationship. A desire to rebel is being instilled. And if the person doesn't get their sense of self back, they will lose themselves. They'll become a sh what I call a shadow person, an empty shell of a human being that only sees the world through the eyes of the person they've surrendered to. This is design law. It's very testable, very producible. You think so much of uh, marriage and these, you know, that, that's kind of the ultimate relationship uh, and the one you maybe have to work on the most. Um, I was watching Dr. Phil one day and he said, every morning I get up and I say to myself, what can I do to make Robin's life better? Now that is one of the healthiest things I've ever heard ab about a marriage relationship because if you've got one partner wanting to make that life better, the response from the other one would probably be pure gold unless there's something wrong with them. Right, unless they're so self-centered that yeah. they just want to exploit and take advantage. Right, Yeah. right, right, right. Uh, if you just join me, I'm talking to uh, Dr. Timothy Jennings, and we're talking about the book, The God-Shaped Brain. And I've got good news for you because he will be on uh, with me the next two days because there's so much uh, material. We're about to run out of time on this. Uh, but what can you say about the many, 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 many ways that a, a kid can be raised in church? Uh, they can be raised in a church that might make them hate it. Yeah. A lot of them. Uh, and others, uh, maybe just the true importance of what this is all about, they're not, they're not getting um, about yeah. how God is to work in our and, lives. And that's one of the key points of the book, The God-Shaped Brain, how changing our view of God transforms our life. Because it's not enough to believe in God. What the science actually shows is um, it depends on the God you believe in. Right. If you believe in a God who is terrifying to you, fear-inducing, um, that this actually um, causes your brain's fear circuitry to fire, you get more stress in your life, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate, your catecholamine levels, this actually leads to physical health problems. You die younger, believing in a God, okay? But if you believe in a God of love like Jesus revealed, neurobiologically the opposite happens. You ca love cast out fear. You calm the fear because you have better health, better relationship, you actually live longer. So changing your view of God actually changes brain and changes health. Uh, you know, we are out of time, but he'll be, he'll be back. And on, on the next show, I want to address um, those who have been raised in a very stern religion. And I had moments, my daddy was a preacher, and I don't have any great complaints, but I, I always kind of wondered if God was mad at me. Uh, and that if I said, gee whiz or something, you know, I had to 
start all over again. And so um, uh, that's the first thing we'll do on the next uh, show is talk about, uh, I have a feeling got a lot of viewers out there that maybe they've never really thought of their concept of God. And, and uh, we'll spread the table for them. All right, perfect. Yeah, you stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, let me again remind you, 199 Promises of God. I'd like to meet the person who compiled these. Uh, it, it's just wonderful, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the kind of world we live in, every once in a while you need a word from the Lord. And uh, the address is, and phone numbers on your screen, 1-800-229-0059. You can use, and this is offered at any amount. If you write to us, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. What could be easier? Well, I... I hope you had the opportunity to really listen to what Dr. Jennings had to say because I, uh, I'm so blessed. I have wonderful children. They married the right people, if you know what I mean. That is a huge blessing. Uh, they've raised their children to love the Lord, and I don't have any reason to complain. But when I hear things like Dr. Jennings said, I thought, I wish I had known that. I wish I had known that when they were born. I wish I had known that when I was carrying them. Because you can have a great influence when you're carrying them. And also, the minute you hold them, you can absolutely think of ways to encourage the proper development of that brain. And as I mentioned to Stephanie a while ago, thank God for the guests he sends to us. I think of Jack LeBen, who was on recently such a history in drugs and God has turned that around to minister to people and for our great great benefit he sends us Dr. Jennings I can't thank him enough because he's going to the next two days he'll be on he's going to open up more and more to what how the word of God and how acknowledging God and loving God actually affects your brain I would say let's love the Lord our God with all of our heart okay Join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.